on the fly. Yeah, baby. Wow. Man, that fish meant it. Holy mackerel. Oh, he's still there. Oh, yeah. Woo. Oh, that is a nice fish. That's a that's one for the stringer if I can get him in. Come here, baby. Yes! Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, buddy. He is exhausted. <laughs> Look at that studly rainbow. That's just a beautiful fish. He is heavy, chunky, not super long, but he is really thick in the body. He's gonna have bright orange meat. Um, that is just a dandy rainbow. I'm gonna get Hello, anglers. Let's talk lead core. And uh, you know me, I love talking about lead core line. You saw me catch a very nice fish using, you know, lead core line, my hybrid setup on one of my iconic yellow lead core rods, trolling an orange trolling fly. And uh, if you watch the channel a lot, you've heard me say this a million times. If the fish are in the top 20 to 25 feet of the water column, I'm using lead core to get down to those fish. It's more efficient than a downrigger. It's much more user friendly. It's direct drive. Put out, you know, two, three, four colors of lead core line and some backing, and you're gonna be able to target whatever depth those fish are feeding at, and uh, you're not gonna have to fuss with downriggers, cranking up the ball, crank it down the ball, using the clip. None of that. It's a super efficient way to fish, and it's very stealthy. You don't have the big downrigger ball going through the water. You've just got the lead core line, and uh, I absolutely love it. The downrigger guys out there, and I use downriggers, but, but your downrigger purists out there, um, they look at us and they think we're old school and they don't understand why we're using lead core, but that's fine. Let them play with their downriggers, and uh, We'll just go out there with our lead core rods and catch a whole bunch of fish when they're fooling around with their clips and cranks and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's not a ton of information out there about lead core line because in reality, the majority of trollers are relying on downriggers at this point. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot of resources to go ask questions about lead core, but uh, I tend to fish a lot and I tend to learn a, a lot about lead core line every single season. And that was certainly the case this year. I spent about two and a half months guiding earlier this spring and I've been fishing quite a bit since then. And a lot of that time, I was using my lead core outfits. And uh, one of the things you need to know about lead core is just like any other line, that lead core is gonna wear out. At some point, it's gonna wear out and you're gonna have to change out that line. It's fairly expensive, so you really wanna try to prolong the life of it as much as possible. Now, the number one way I, uh, I recommend that you do that is by running a trolling swivel at you know where your where your your main line transitions to your leader and that trolling swivel the intent of that is to prevent line twist from being transmitted from the bait to the line and ultimately to the lead core line now if you're a casual guy maybe you're fishing once a week twice a month something like that that is going to be enough you're not going to have any trouble but what Wes and I found this spring is we were pretty much running one of our lead core rods as a dedicated naked worm rolling rod. Um, at times the bite was tough and we were really relying on those naked worms to get the hits for our clients. Our goal was to catch 15 trout every single day and to do that a lot of the time we needed to roll worms. And when you're rolling a worm 8, 10, 12 hours a day, day after day after day, what we found is we started getting twist transmitted to the lead core despite the fact that we were using the trolling swivel. And how do you know if you got twist in your lead core? Well, it's not gonna jump off the reel in a big bird's nest like mono will. Instead, it starts to get lumpy and bumpy. And as, as, it, as the process goes on, you get more lumps and bumps. And for a while, you can deal with it and it goes through the guides just fine. It just doesn't feel that great. But take it from me, there will become a point when those lumps and bumps are driving you insane and you're gonna have to rip that line off 
and change it. So what we started doing after we put on fresh line, we started running a trolling rudder, you know, regardless of, 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 of running the, the trolling swivel. If we were rolling, running anything that rolled or twisted, we just started running the trolling rudders. Um, it didn't take away from our presentation, but it did virtually eliminate line twist. So that's, that's my number one tip. If you're running anything that rolls and you're gonna be fishing for a sustained period of time, you should really consider teaming your trolling swivel up with a rudder. I sell those rudder kits in the store. I'm not plugging my own rudders, or I guess I am, but you know, if you find some other brand, whatever, you need you need trolling rudders to really help, you know, get get down to zero line twist. Now I'm starting to see some really bright light in my camera. So I'm gonna take a minute here to move the camera and I'll be right back. Okay, that's much better. I guess that sun was kind of right over my head there. Now, there's another thing you can do that will mess your line or your lead core lineup in short order, and uh, you're watching me do it right now. What I'm doing right now is I'm letting my line out on the kayak, and I am kind of jigging the line in the water and the lure against the rod and the reel to pull more lead core off the reel. And guess what? Every time I do that, here's the end of the rod, you can see right here. Every time I, I jig it like that, I'm putting a bend in the lead core when I do that, watch. Let's say I did that, If I, and you see that right there? That is a bend in the lead core, the core inside the woven sheath. That is gonna become a bad spot in the line over time. It's gonna break the lead core in there. I'm gonna get a lump and eventually the tip of that lead wire is gonna pop out through the sheath. Now, I've been trying not to do that in the kayak. And what you wanna to do to eliminate that, if you're in a power boat, it's a lot easier. You can just point the rod at the bait and you know take the, the, the reel out of gear and just strip the line out. Well, that's what I've been doing in the kayak too. I'll strip it out and then I'll just kinda, kinda wiggle the line out on the water. It takes a little, little bit more time to get out, you know, get your line out doing that. Once you've got out, you know, one color of lead core, it'll flow off the reel just fine by itself at a normal trolling speed, say two miles an hour. But until then, you wanna be pretty gentle with the line and you don't wanna do that, that twitching method that I like to do, and I, I'm fighting doing it, but I still do it at times because that's gonna put a bunch of bends in that lead core and it's just gonna weaken the line overall. Now, here's my final tip on how to ruin your lead core very quickly. And, uh, you know, Wes, not only is he my business partner, he's one of my best friends, but I'm gonna kind of throw him under the bus here. When we got done at Collins, I got, I got the, the lead core rods back because a lot of the rods we use on the boat, they're my personal rods. And I was noticing that there were little whiskers of lead wire sticking out all over the line. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why. I'd never seen that before. <clears throat> and then I started thinking about what I saw Wes doing. And you know, Wes is a Wes is a bass guy at the end of the day. He started out bass fishing. He's an excellent trout troller, but he still got some of that bass fisherman in his mind. And every once in a while, when you're letting out your lead core, you'll get a little backlash, okay? It's very important that you gently work out the backlash. What I would see Wes do, and it didn't, didn't raise any alarm bells you know, in my mind until I saw the lion after the season, he would grab that lion and he's pulling on it like he's trying to pull a squirrel out of a hole or something. And if you pull on the lead core like that, hard like that, apparently it snaps that little lead wire and it very, very quickly you know, sticks out through the sheath. Again, it doesn't really weaken the line. It just makes it just makes it very annoying. So, treat your lead core line pretty gently. The straighter you keep the line, the better off you're going to be. A couple final points about lead core, and uh, we're going to talk leader length here. Um, my leaders have progressively gotten shorter and shorter and shorter over time. I started out using a 100 foot top shot of fluorocarbon line. Then I shortened it to 50 feet on one rod and 25 on another rod. These days, I'm running a 20 foot top shot on both rods and we experimented at Collins Lake this spring, which isn't a clear water lake, but it's not a muddy water lake either. It's kind of, I'd say medium clarity. Um, and we find that we could run a four foot leader right off the end of the lead core and we didn't notice a discernible difference in the fish catching ability of that rod 
versus a rod running a longer top shot. And there's a lot of pro skippers back in the Great Lakes area that think you actually catch more fish running a shorter top shot on lead core because lead core line going through the water, it oscillates in a very subtle way that adds action to your lures and it also reacts with the water that lead wire inside the sheath and puts off a positive electrical you know charge into the water a very slight charge but nevertheless a positive charge and that actually encourages fish to come into the area and to pick off your bait so food for thought treat your treat your lead core with care and uh, it will treat you very well um, you want to prolong its life as long as possible and start playing with your top shot length. Start shortening up those top shots and I think you're going to continue to catch as many fish as you were catching before. You might even find that you're catching more fish than you were catching before because as I said, there's a lot of guys that know a lot more about lead core than I do that really advocate using a very short top shot six, eight, 10 feet in length, something like that. Anyway, I'll keep playing with lead core. You do the same. I love my lead core. And uh, if you try fishing it, you're gonna love it too. I'm signing off for now. If you're looking for rods, reels, gear, spoons, flies, all that stuff, you know where to go, fishhuntshoot.com. I wanna thank you for supporting the channel and I will catch you here next time on YouTube and we will talk fishing. You guys have a great day. I'm Kel Kellogg. <laughs>